It's the return of the Nine Glide mid-range. And it's new and updated version. That's parked. Ooh, quite a bit more stable. Hey, what's up guys? Dylan here from Iceberg TV. Today, I've got the world famous Nine Glide mid-range. I was really surprised how many of you guys really like throwing the gateway element. I was able to get my hands on from my buddy Wes that really weird run with the weird Nine Glide flight numbers. So today I have a new element, um, compliments of Disc Golf Deals USA, that we're going to be comparing the old Nine Glide run to the new Five Glide run, and let's see what the differences are like. And for some of the longer holes, I will also be checking out the brand new Latitude 64 Opto Cenus. Um, the Cenus was a mold I feel like was most made famous by Dave Feldberg. He swore by the Cenus for a very long time, but it had those weird grippy thumb pads on it. And I do have one in the bag with the weird grippy thumb pads, but I'm really excited to test this disc out in the new gold line, the new opto line, which does not have the weird thumb pads. So I'll be throwing the elements off the tee and then hopefully get an opportunity to throw some cool upshots with the Cenus as well. So the old element compared to the new element, we've got one that was stamped stable mid-range with a minus one turn, a one fade, and a five glide. Then we've got the tomfoolery flight numbers, which I honestly am a much bigger fan of because nobody has any idea what this means. Based on the profile, I knew before I even threw it, it was going to be a very straight flyer. But old versus new. I know there's a lot of people that actually really like Gateway. They've been around for so long, and I don't see a ton of people at my local courses throwing Gateway. When I upload Gateway videos, they tend to do really well. So we'll go nine glide, then we'll go five glide. We need to get a good turn here. Let's see if we can get these bad boys to turn. Oh, that is, oh! That was just a little low, but that was actually an ace run. That was fire. Hopefully you guys could see that. Now let's see how the new diamond element flies. Wow. The element is a goaded mid-range. If you've never thrown an element, I would definitely recommend trying one. The non-glide element just barely missed on the left side of the basket. That thing was very close. Ooh, almost at the camera. Pull three is a tricky little par four. We need a nice pushing hyzer off the tee. Then we have a really cool shot into the green, a very heavily guarded basket. I think we can get there with two element shots. Normally I go driver off this tee. But I do still think we can get there with the elements. You just need that like nice stock pushing hyzer. You can't get too greedy off the tee on this hole unless you go the Yuli gap on the left, which I'm not in the mood for something like that today. I want to keep it simple. <sighs> the new diamond element, by no means is it overstable, but it is definitely a stable mid-range. Kind of that do-it-all slot. But this obviously is the main gap here. It's not super accessible off the tee, but this gap right here is known as the Yuli gap locally, because Yuli will shoot it through this gap, cut way more distance off the tee, and then potentially have a look at the two. I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate to this, but I need to master just putting it in the fairway before I worry about the uh, skill shot gaps off the tee. All right, we are going to do a element into that very guarded green there. Look at it just pop up to absolute perfection. Oh. Fade. A very guarded green. That's actually a pretty tricky upshot to execute. Pull four features a classic split fairway situation. I think I'm going to hit both of these on the right side. We got a hyzer flip with the nine glide, and then we can go with a little more stable flat shot with the five glide. But Kilbourne Park has some of the nicest, most beaten fairways. This is one of the oldest courses in Charlotte, and it's a local favorite because it's just got a ton of fun holes exactly like this.
I gotta flip up and push. And that might be a little short. I'm not exactly sure. It's 321 feet. Honestly, the element is like the perfect disc for this hole if I can throw it properly with enough height. That's the one. That's literally should be parked. That nice high fading stall shot. Fire disc. And both shots finding their way right inside of circle one. The basket on this one is a little bit hard to see. It's just to the left of that dark tree there. The basket is certainly in frame, um, but with the white bands, it's kind of hard to see the basket off the tee. We will go nine glide element on the turning line, but then that same shot we threw on the last hole with the little bit more stable element, I do want to hit this right side. That's sort of pushing stall shot with a little bit of height that we threw on the last hole. Let's see if we can't force a nice turn here. A little bit of turn. I mean, that is so true to the minus one one flight numbers. Honestly, it's honestly labeled perfectly on the new mold. I don't know what the old num flight numbers used to be like, but that disc flies perfectly to the new flight numbers. Now let's hit the right side. Oh, all right, good tree. Let's just throw one of these zero medium scenuses here. It's a 300 foot hole. I'm not getting a two speed there, I don't think. But let's see how she flies. <sighs> so I'd say with a fan grip, definitely flew very true to those zero two flight numbers. All right, I've got the zero medium old school Cenus here. I've got the Opto Cenus. This was my element that hit a tree. Let's see how these guys fly on the forehand. I'm gonna use the thumb pads on the vintage Cenus just to see what it's like. Definitely feels bad for me. Oh, nice and stable though. Those thumb pads feel terrible. It's much better in the new Opto plastic. It's a hair more stable and a hair more dumpy as well. Not a terrible upshot disc. I'm excited to play with that a little bit more. Hole six is another pretty sweet par four. We have another opportunity for the turnover. I am going to try to forehand the stable element here, and then hopefully we need to access a tunnel to get to the basket in the par four location. So the goal is to get far enough and then a little bit right. We really don't need to bite too much off the tee on this shot. Go at the turnover first. Get clean. That's pretty ideal, honestly. Curious to see if this can handle the off-axis torque of just a stock forehand hyzer. So you can see how it wanted to pop up to straight. Um, for me, that's not good when I want something to go hard to the right. Um, but I just wouldn't throw the element on that kind of shot. So if I was looking for a dead straight forehand, that would be a nice option for that specific shot. So the forehand is right here. The backhand is right here. Just maybe five feet or three feet apart from one another. And then just beyond the white basket, you can see the blue basket right there. Let's give that Cenus another go. Zero medium Cenus should be the straightest of the Cenus that I brought today. Gonna go a little fan grip high with a touch of Annie. Wow, okay, that's absolutely parked for birdie. Nice little flight on that fan grip Anheuser. All right, if you told me I'd come out here today and have a tap and birdie on this basket with a mid-range and a Cenus, I'd have called you crazy. All right, hole seven is right at 250 feet. Let's give these Opto Cenus and then the old school with thumb pads, zero medium Cenus, like a full power forehand hyzer. Let's see what kind of flight we get on that shot. When thrown on hyzer, they're extremely stable. Again, another hole where you'd, I wouldn't really throw a putter, but maybe I should be. The old one might be a little more stable than the new one. I'm sure it'll straighten out as that zero medium beats in, but it seemed really dumpy out of the hand. So the old zero medium is deep inside circle one. And I think because it is quite a bit domier, the Opto one wound up pushing a little too far and straight. It wasn't quite dumpy enough to put us in the circle like the old one was. 
hole eight, 205. We'll do one element and one opto -senus. The basket is off to the left. I don't think you guys can see the basket, so hopefully I don't ace. Although that could go in. I went just over the basket by like less than a foot. And then we got one Cenus, fan grip style. And it's absolutely parked. So far, I'm really liking the Cenuses today. Um, I'm playing that element perfectly. Something a little more stable that I can really rely on when I need a sweeping shot like that. Cenus, again, absolutely parked. And then this guy that went right over the basket in the bush over there, but still inside the circle. Two decent shots. All right, we got Dylan and Steve here. Dylan's got the stable one. He's going to give us a nice forehand. We got Steve with the flippy one. He's going to give us the backhand. No pressure. Oh, that's a nice looking flick. Oh, nice looking shot, though. Over to the left a All right, let's see if Steve is better than Dylan. Over. It should turn a little bit. Not super flippy, it's just like neutral. Oh, I love everything about it. Oh, he oh. The tree. <laughs> Thanks for throwing, guys. No worries, thank you. There's a lot of pressure that comes with just throwing a shot on Iceberg TV, and I feel like those guys handled it pretty well. Here on hole 11, we got a nice, juicy turnover opportunity. Perfect hole for the element. Oh, come on, little more turn. If you want to birdie or ace this hole, it needs to hang on to the turn for a bit longer. I kind of babied that one. Stable element might be better for the shot. You can trust it with a bit more power. Oh man, that new element is so good as well. Love them both. Holy cow, almost acing yet again. These things are flying really nice out here today. Hole 13, 278 feet, just a beauty of a pushing, sweeping hyzer shot. I need to know, are you guys bagging any gateway discs? If yes, which ones do you bag or which ones do you like? If no, let me know why not. Comment below. Should be parked. If not an ace run. Oh yeah, I can barely see the basket through the trees. That was actually a little bit short. I like the more stable one for this hole as well. Can trust it just a little bit more going. Oh, just over the top of the basket. Yeah, man, locked in with the element. Let's also try this Optocenus on a power grip. Just flat backhand shot. Let's see how it handles the power grip. For a two speed, it's actually going quite far considering how overstable it is. Hole 14 will in fact be a tough get with the elements. Again, probably throw like at least a seven or an eight speed at minimum on this hole, maybe even a firebird on the flick. We got 328 feet, but it plays a little farther because the basket sits on a nice little uphill area. Birdieing this with an element would actually be insane. If that holds the turn, oh no. I love that line, but it hit one of the last few trees and kicked hard left turn. The flick element max power. This is the true test of stability right here. Yeah, I just wanted to pop up and go a little bit too straight. That might be close, but I didn't, didn't love that line at all. All right, guys, I don't know. The element is fire. I don't know why it's not my main bag. It may have to make an appearance into the tournament bag. Just seems to be a disc that I consistently throw well every time I come out and do a video with it. Um, if you want to save the most money on anything disc golf, all disc golf products, go to my store at discgolfdealsusa.com slash iceberg TV. The link is in the description below. That's where you're going to be able to save the most money on your disc golf products. Um, they have great prices over there and then a massive selection and it is actively growing very quickly. So go check out the site. I'll see you guys in the next video and take care.